Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, inshallah, today we will be talking about the sittings uh, of Shur Hajj. So, uh, why do we start with the sittings? Why don't we start with Hajj or Umrah? Uh, I know all of you are excited to go right away and start making quotations and applications and accept clients and uh, add hotel prices and all these beautiful things that we do under Umrah and under Hajj. But uh, the reason we start with the, with the sittings first, and we highly recommend that you listen to this video uh, with the sittings, uh, is because uh, there is a lot, of cert a lot of things under Umrah and under Hajj that needs to be identified in the settings first in order to capture the full potential of Shur Hajj. For example, the hotel. Uh, when you get the hotel, sometimes you get prices from three, four vendors, right? Uh, you could get the prices from the hotel itself. Maybe you get a prices from your Saudi uh, agent. Maybe you get a prices from uh, another company that you deal with in your country. So three different vendors. Um, when you do put the prices uh, for the hotels in Umrah, uh, you will need to identify where did I get these prices from, which vendor. Was it just from the hotel directly uh, or from company one or company two or company three? Now, where do you add this company one, company two, company three? You add them in the settings. The nice thing about the settings is all of these uh, things may look too much for you, but trust us, uh, this is a one-time thing. You only do it one time, and that's it. Uh, to be honest, you can set up your whole system in less than 30 minutes, and you could be ready to go, and you don't even have to come back to it any uh, time soon. You can, that's it. You can use it forever. Um, other things that you would that you would want to identify in the settings like your company's information. So when you send emails or when you send invoices, then you have your logo, you have your company name, address, contact information, and so on. Uh, so the settings area is very beneficial. Uh, we highly recommend that you watch this video before you jump into Umrah and Hajj, because if you don't, and if you jump right away into Umrah and Hajj, you will not be able to capture the full potential uh, of the system and certain options won't even work for you. So you have to go to the settings first. Now, this video has marks, has chapters. So inshallah, during our description of the settings, we will be going and covering a lot of options. So. In case you are looking for a specific option, the easiest way to do it is in the description, click on show more, and you will see the timeline of the video with title of each subject or each uh, 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 thing option we're going to talk about. Uh, by clicking on this, uh, 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 the t um, by clicking the title you would like to see, the video will skip to this area and you can watch uh, only what you want to learn from this video or as we recommend you can watch the whole video and set up your sure hajj as you go uh, let's start inshallah so if i click on settings here we will have a great uh, we will have a couple of options that's what we will be discussing today for example we have preferences we got file paths we got useful links and so on. Uh, now, let's say, for example, uh, that you want to, uh, we are talking now about preferences, but you are actually you already know preferences. You want to view useful links. The easiest way to do this, as I said, is click on show more in description and click on the title that says useful links. The video will skip to useful links and this way you could only uh, listen to what you want to uh, view in this video. Uh, let's start with preferences. Company preferences are general information about the company and as we said you don't have to re-enter this tab again. It's just one time you set it and that's it. Majority of this information will come directly out of the box with your setup of Shur Hajj. Mm -hmm. But you may want to add more uh, information and you can do this by entering the settings then preferences. Under preferences, you got four tabs, office, office information, miscellaneous, printing, Saudi representatives. 
the official information, this is typically the information of your main uh, branch. So uh, the head office, basically. Uh, so if you have multiple branch branches, then you will put the head office information here. If you only have one office, then still you can put it here, no issue. Uh, these information will show on your invoices, on the receipts, and so on. So uh, it's important that you review this information. Majority of this will be filled automatically, like we said, but it's good that you update it if you want to. Uh, it's very easy here. You put the company name, you put the address, city, province, postal code. Uh, if you don't have uh, a postal code, you can leave it empty, no problem. You can put a phone number and fax. We do not recommend that you put multiple phone numbers or multiple faxes because the area that shows on the invoice is small and you don't want it to look messy. You want it to look organized. Once you finish what you want to add here, you press save and you're done. So if I press save here, then you get the confirmation, then you're done. All right, so uh, miscellaneous, if I press on miscellaneous here, this screen may look scary, but it's not scary at all. It's very simple, actually. Uh, here, the first tab uh, uh, talks about security. Security meaning that if you want the security measures to be enforced or not the uh, permissions. So if you have multiple, let's say you have multiple uh, people working for you. Uh, you got sales agents, you got uh, accountants, and you want the accountants to see certain things, and you want the sales agents to see certain things but not other things. Uh, by having this option enabled here, uh, this will enforce these measures. So everybody who works for you see only what you want them to see and we'll discuss that later on in under security again majority of this information will be already filled for you so even if you don't have to if you don't want to fill it you don't have to but we recommend that you go over it uh, the general here local processing folder you don't have to worry about this this is basically where the uh, program saves some tim, tim files and they will be deleted later on so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, here, this is a Hajj on soft company. For those who deal with Hajj on soft and they want to continue dealing with Hajj on soft, um, you can basically speak to uh, the owner, uh, Mr. Ayman, and get your own code, your own company code, and enter it here. So that creates the link between SureHaj and Hajj on soft. So when you scan your documents in SureHaj, you, with one click, Everything is sent to Hajjan Soft. You don't have to redo it again. Uh, so it's a it's a beautiful, great um, idea that we uh, recommend if you're using Hajjan Soft. Um, uh, this option here, Amra Backward Compatible, that's actually for existing users of SureHaj who uses an older version and they are happy with the older version, they don't want the new features, uh, they can basically uh, press this. We do not recommend for you, we do not recommend this option for you as a new user uh, because you do want to take all the, uh, capture all the beneficial uh, options of the new versions. Uh, now, under accounting, uh, system currency symbol. So you can put the symbol that you want the system to use. Uh, we put a dollar sign here. If you are in Saudi Arabia, you can put SAR. If you are in Egypt, you can put pound. Uh, if you are in Europe, you can put uh, pound or uh, euro. Uh, whatever symbol that you want the system to use, you can put it here. Uh, uh, under here, uh, there is a Umrah code validation period. So here, uh, basically, what this is, is the number of days you allow your, your Umrah code to be valid. So when you code someone, uh, one of your clients, uh, you give them what, 24 hours? You give them one day, two days, three days, you can write it here. Uh, obviously, it goes by days, it doesn't go by hours, so if it's 24 hours, uh, sorry, if it's less than 24 hour, then you can leave that empty, zero. So that means the, the code is not going to be valid. It's just a one-time code and that's it. It can change it any time. Uh, Hajj installments be, uh, reminder period and uh, uh, Hajj installments overdue period, that actually goes for Hajj and for Umrah groups. 
um, where you uh, put the installment. So, for example, a, a client comes to you and they want to make multiple payments installments. And you want the system to remind the client before the installment date. So that's the first the first uh, uh, number here. And you want them to remind them that they have a past due payment after the installment date. And that's here. So you can set it like uh, four and four, three and three. And then uh, we will show you from under Hajj and under Umrah how to actually send these emails. Very simple. Now the uh, uh, the last part is the Hajj quota information. Uh, here it's actually a very beneficial part. If uh, you have multiple branches, you got sub agents, and everybody have a copy of Sure Hajj because you know that you have unlimited copies of Sure Hajj. So you can install it on so many devices and have a lot of people working for you. So you don't have to do the work yourself. Uh, obviously with authorization so everybody does only what you want them to do so if you do this and you sell hash packages there's a quota and you don't want to be selling in one branch and while your quota has already been done because you sold out but they're still selling because you forgot to send them an email saying that hey we are sold out so uh, this is uh, comes the first option enforcing hash quota control so if you have it enabled then you have to enter the number of hash quota the total number of hash quota that you want the system not to record anything beyond that number uh, the rest here are information about your Munazim number, Munazim name, the office, passport office number that you deal with over there, your Minicamp number, Mutawif establishment name. All of these information are useful in uh, service contracts, in uh, vendors, uh, sorry, in uh, vouchers. Uh, so these information come very handy, especially in the contract between you and your Hajj client uh, and Umrah client as well. This is just uh, the requirements of Saudi Arabia. If you don't want to fill it, if you don't want to use it, you can leave it empty, no no issue, but we recommend that you use it. Again, after you finish anything that you're doing here, you click save and you get the confirmation uh, message. Now the third tab is printing. So printing here, it's specifically talking about your invoice, okay? So here you got uh, uh print company information yes of course like your name address and all that and print the logo of course you want to uh, put that as well printing the logo and then invoice top what would you like to put uh, on the top of your invoice for example here this is a company called way to hajj and we put here you are a step closer to the holy land it's just come so, some sort of uh you know um a tagline uh, at the invoice bottom, you can actually put, you know, some basic information or you can put something short as, you know, thank you for doing business with us. Uh, and then again, you press save, then your invoices will come very beautifully done and uh, like you actually want them to be. Uh, now, lastly, Saudi representatives, the, the Shur Hajj actually gives you four options medina representative mecca jeddah and saudi accountant or your actual accountant here uh, these are basic information about your main representative so you may have in mecca for example you may have three four people working for you uh, you don't want to put all of them obviously you want to put the one that can deal with the client and the one that you send your main person the one that you send the reservation to so that it can they can view it they know that your clients are coming for umrah or they're coming for hajj uh, and they can wait for them uh, so basically these are the main people this information will show on the clients vouchers and uh, and uh, they're very uh, you can you, you you will be also able to send them reservations so when you're creating reservation we will discuss this under Umrah and under Hajj. You will be able with one click to send the reservation to your representative so they are aware which clients are coming and what they booked, what kind of hotels, transportation, and so on. Uh, and then again, you can uh, save. The save button also work for all four tabs. So you could actually, you know, uh, update all the four tabs 
so one tab and, and then you can access the second tab and update it, the third tab and update it, and at the end press save. So you don't have to press save every time you make an update. That's it for the preferences. This is one of the main things that you need to set up or review when you get the package, the installation package uh, for Surehash. Second, we have file path. Basically, what file path is is a bunch of folders that help Surehash save files into uh, these folders on your computer or present files from this computer like photos, passport photos, stuff like that. Usually, you will not ever need to enter this screen because it's usually set up for you. But if you use certain uh, softwares like uh, Hajun Soft, uh, you will need to tell the system where is the installation folder of Hajun Soft. So, for example, if your regular installation folder on on Hajun Soft is C. On, on your C drive and then the folder name is Hajun Soft, you will need to assign this here. Uh, you go to your uh, C and then you choose Hajun Soft. That's what you do in all of them. Uh, as we said, you will not uh, you will not need to actually change any of this. This is all gonna come with the setup. Uh, so you need to, you don't need to worry about that, but just uh, in case uh, that's where all the folders are if you ever want to change something. The most important uh, directory out of all of this is um, the fourth one here is called client files root folder. Uh, this is basically where the setup of everything uh, that you have. Uh, so with your installation, uh, uh, with your installation, you will get OneDrive account. Uh, we'll talk about that in a different video. Uh, but uh, uh, simply, uh, when you install Surehash, you will have to install that OneDrive first so that your files are accessible uh, to anybody uh, in your organization. So if you have uh, employees, they can access your files through OneDrive. It makes it easy so you can see all the photos, all the passport pictures, anywhere, everywhere, and uh, 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 using any device. So you will always need to, and this is just one time when you install it, you will need to say to system, to set up the system, and tell it where this folder is. And the system will save that for everybody. So you don't have to do it on each computer, just the first computer you install Surehash on. Uh, other than that, uh, everything is self-explanatory. Uh, all you have to do if you want to know the information about what, what this is, you click on the link. It will show here on the right side uh, all the information that you need to know about this folder. Again, once you finish, you can press save and uh, save will be here. We didn't change anything, so that's why it's disabled for us. Uh, but uh, yes, you will uh, press save and then you will exit uh, and that's it, you're done file path. A great uh, feature here is our third uh, option, useful links. Uh, what is useful links? Basically, each company has their own uh, multimedia that they would like to share with their mu'tamirin uh, or hujjaj. For example, you want them to watch a movie on how to perform hajj step by step by your own sheikh or you want to share with them maps or books, anything like this. So basically, Surehash gives you that option. You can set up these materials, uh, and then when the clients enter their online portal, which we will be explaining in details later on in a different video, uh, they will see under useful links, they will see all the links here, and they can actually view this file. So you don't have to manually uh, send your uh, each group or each person these materials. They can actually uh, sign in and just watch it. And that's one of the great features of, uh, of uh, Surehash. Uh, what you need to do is basically upload your file, whether it, if it's a video, you can upload it on YouTube, um, or it's files, you can use something like Google Files, and uh, you get the link. You get the link to that file. And all you need to do here is uh, you press New, and then you give it a name. So that name is actually for you, not for the clients. And then you give it a title. This title is for the clients. 
and then you put the URL and you can put a short description of what this file is so the client can read that short description and can decide whether or not they are interested. For example, uh, on the left side here, so after, after you put all of this, you press save, it's saved already on the left side. And you can enter any of the left side uh, items and you can update them and press save and you're done. Or you can delete them if you don't want. Uh, if you see here, for example, we said uh, how to perform Umrah, here's the YouTube link, and learn how to perform Umrah in simple steps. That's it. Now, each client of uh, ours, when they sign in online, they're seeing uh, a, a link, useful link called how to perform Umrah. They click on it and they can watch the video. It's that simple. All right, so that takes us to the fourth option, which is define lists. Under define list, if I click on that little arrow pointing down, we have three options, validation, processing steps, and required documents. In a nutshell, first let's go over validation. If I click on it, these are a bunch of validation. You are telling Surehash that, hey, for each file, for each reservation, for each application I add, I want you to check for these validation and tell me if they are all met or not. For example, um, here we can choose an option like application does not have an email. So the right away, if you add a reservation, which we call it application in Shurhaj, uh, and you forgot to add an email address. Uh, obviously, when you're trying to send emails, the system is not able to send emails. But under this application, you will see uh, the uh, uh, an icon called validation and it will tell you that you forgot to add it will alert you so these are very beneficial alerts uh, that help you um, do your job properly so you have options like uh, alert me if there is no email alert me if I am missing if I am missing passport information for one or all the passengers uh, alert me if uh, the application has a balance that is not paid Alert me if um, I, I don't have the complete uh, documents. Alert me if I didn't do the flights, if I didn't assign the passengers to flights. Alert me if I didn't assign them to rooming. Alert me if I didn't assign them to Min Arafat and so on. These are majority of these options are coming from experience and from the operation of Umrah and Hajj. Now, you don't have to choose any of this, okay? These are all optional. And maybe the next year uh, you decide to use them. You can come back and check what you want to and press save. Uh, or you can uncheck everything and press save. Not a problem. Uh, you always uh, have freedom to choose what kind of restrictions or alerts you want the system to apply on uh, all your files. But we highly recommend that you actually use validation uh, if you really want to do your job properly. Uh, folks, I want to remind you one thing. The goal of using Surehash is to organize your work, to take care of all the technicality, to organize all the files for you so you can actually have uh, more time to focus on uh, customer service. So imagine this, if you have the system already alerting you if you forgot something, maybe I forgot to add an email or a phone number or a passport information, the system right away uh, 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 alert you and your staff members so that this way you can actually uh, get this information from the clients, uh, how great this is. You can now focus on uh, offering more services to more clients. Uh, and that's the goal of using Shurhash. And we'll show you something here. We'll show you, uh, we'll, uh, I'll quickly uh, show you, for example, uh, here are all the reservations that we have under Hajj, for example, without even have to, having to enter anything. You see this icon? Here it shows me that, oh, this file is complete. I don't have to worry about anything here. But here it's telling me that there is a problem. If I click on it and I press on validation, it tells me that, for example, for this clients, 
uh, or actually these two clients are not assigned to rooms that's a big problem imagine if you forgot to assign people to room and uh, you find this out after you finalize your rooming contract with the hotel that can cost you a lot of money and uh, here this validation is what I chose right now I want the application to alert to, to I want sure hash to alert me if people are not assigned to rooms here we go it's done and I don't even have to go through all the application. I just have to see those with uh, alert icon and I can then contact the client or I can do uh, 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 complete the file. Then this validation will be done. Now we go to the second one, processing steps. Basically processing steps are a bunch of processing steps that you program sure has to do or to alert you again uh, uh, you or your staff of course while you're adding the application uh, for example uh, uh, you want uh, here we have selected all of them so here you want the application contract to be created right away you want the application deposit to be paid uh, here when you're processing passengers uh, you want the uh, passport pictures to be delivered document complete uh, applied for visa when you check all of this sure has automatically process your file as you add them and check for these things if any of them is not met again it alerts you and if they are all met you get the check mark that you know this file is great you don't have to worry about anything now also, uh, 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 this is beneficial when the clients, uh, they sign in in their online portal and they can see the update with their files automatically. So for example, they can see that you applied for a visa. They can see that, oh, their visa is granted. Uh, they can see that they are assigned to rooming and they can view who is staying with the room with them and know exactly that uh, if there's uh, anything wrong and they can alert you for it uh, and so on. So this actually saves you a lot of time. Uh, guys, as we uh, talked about, uh, without doing this, uh, without setting the validation, without setting these processing steps, uh, when you actually start adding reservations or applications, as we call it, in Umrah and in Hajj, the, you don't take advantage of any of this. It becomes useless to you. But by doing this, it takes two minutes to do. Uh, you can actually add all of them or you can take some of them off and you can save it once and for all, but you are enjoying all the features. Now for the sake of testing, I will tell the system that, hey, uh, don't alert me if we return the documents to the client and don't alert me if uh, we gave the kit to the client. I'm going to save that. Now I will enter the hash to show you how this will reflect on the application. I will go to any of my clients here. This one, for example, and I will click on processing. And if I choose any of the clients, as you can see, these are the things that I am interested for the system to alert me. These are the only two things that were met uh, for this particular clients. These two is the one that we already took away. So as you can see them, they're dimmed, they are not enabled, which means you're not interested in them. So only the things that are enabled will show here. Uh, this is a great feature as we talked about uh, before, especially if you have staff working for you and you want them to be alerted anytime they have uh, uh, not completed a step. That's it for the processing steps. Finally, required documents. Required documents is very simple. Uh, you will get a list with your uh, installation uh, for sure hash, but you can actually alternate, you can update this list or you can completely uh, enter a new one. That's completely up to you. So here we uh, tell the system what is required, what kind of documents do we require from clients and whether it's for Umrah or for Hajj. As you can see here, for example, Hajj visa application and it says here season both actually that's wrong so we want to we want we want to change that so i come here i click on it i come here and choose no this is only for hajj and i press save right away it changed to h which means hajj uh two passport photos uh here we go it says both yes we require this for umrah and for hajj 
Now here, the third uh, tab here, you can choose if it is required document or not. So you can add all the documents that you can think of and you can flag it as required or not required, optional, for example. So, uh, for example, I will uh, uh, m make a new one here. If I click new and I say uh, PCR for COVID-19 and I can press here required or not, I'm going to require it. I'm going to say both. It's for Hajj and for Umrah. If I click save, here we go. Now, when I'm creating a new reservation, this will be one of the requirements. That's very nice because you don't have to type it for each client. You can just, for each client, you go, uh, you go inside the file and you can uh, specify what you need from them from within these documents. So, for example, if you have a guy, you don't need uh, uh, a marriage certificate for a guy, for example, because he's already, he doesn't need a mahram. Uh, so you can waive that option uh, because you don't need it. Uh, for example, if you uh, don't collect the original uh, passport, you just need a copy, you can specify that you need a copy. We'll show you all of this when we actually talk about Umrah and Hajj. Uh, but that's for it. Again, it's one-time use. You can only set it one time. Without doing it in the settings, this option becomes useless to you in Umrah and in Hajj, uh, which means you don't capture really uh, uh, the value of using all the options in Shurhash. And it is as simple as that. Already you're gonna have a set of documents. You can change it if you want to, or you can add new. That's it for the required documents. And that concludes uh, the define list option. All right, now we will be speaking about emails settings. Now, uh, just a quick note, without explaining this email settings, there is no way you'll be able to send emails in Umrah and Hajj, simple as that. And so that's how that settings is very important. We go through it and again, you do it once and you don't have to redo it again unless you want to update something. So here in this screen, we have a menu, which I'll explain in a second. And then we have uh, a list here on the right we have a body here in the middle and then a list of fields here, which I will explain this in a second. But the first option is to configure. So when you first get your Hajj and install it, you need to come here to email settings and press on configure and you need to put the information of your email address. So if you use Gmail, Gmail has a security option, uh, which is completely explained how to do it in the help. So any screen that you enter it, you will see, as you can see here, there's always help. You click on the help, you'll see a video explaining step by step how uh, to configure this screen or how what to do in this screen. But here, these are the SMTB uh, uh, server of Gmail. Uh, this is the board. These are all given by your email provider. So if you ask your email provider, that's what you will get from them. Here, you actually put the email which will be used to send emails from Shurhaj by default without having to have customized emails. Now, if you have uh, uh, agents working for you and you want them to send from their own emails, they have to use Outlook. So they have to open Outlook and keep it open and then the uh, Shurhaj will automatically uh, 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 choose the email uh, from Outlook and send it from their own email, not from this generic generic email. But if you want to keep a tab, if you want to keep track of how many emails are sent, when are these emails sent, uh, the history of these emails and the communication with clients, that's what you have to do. You have to have one email that all the emails from Shurhaj uh, go from. And that's where you configure it. You put your email address, your password, and these settings and then you press save, you're done. Uh, so that's the most important part. Uh, here on the left side, these are bunch of templates, email templates that come directly from Shurhaj. You can add to it, you can modify it, you can update it, no problem. What are the emails templates? These emails are here, if I click on this one, for example, this is, it, it shows you the name of the template, it shows you the subject of your email, so that's what the client is going to see. And this is the body, this is what's written inside. 
this email. The body is a regular text which you can write plus placeholders that comes from the left side here. Uh, placeholder like what? Um, so left, um, sorry. Uh, so plus uh, placeholder that come from the right side here. Uh, placeholder like what? Like application name. So for example, when you're sending emails, Shurhaj has two uh, different ways of sending emails. Uh, you can send one client uh, an email, or you can send a bunch of clients. Let's say you want to email all of your group members uh, the same email, a welcome email, or a um, receipt email, or an email explaining what they booked with you. Uh, these are all placeholders that you can choose from the right side here, and Surehash will customize it automatically for each application, for each reservation. So a person named Ahmed, his name is going to show Ahmed. He's not going to show Muhammad. Uh, so if you have Ahmed, Muhammad, Ali, three emails will be sent. Uh, Ahmed will receive Ahmed. Muhammad will receive Muhammad. Ali will receive Ali, for example. And we will show you now how to choose these uh, uh, um, uh, placeholders. Uh, so now this is the body. Here you can define that this email, you want this template for Hajj only or you want this template for Umrah only, or you want the templates for both. So this way, uh, 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 when you are under Umrah, you will see only the Umrah emails, and when you're under Hajj, you'll see only the Hajj emails. Uh, this option right here, email uh, enabled, uh, basically you can define so many templates, but you only have bunch enabled. Enabled means that you, people can use it. Uh, unenabled, it will not even appear. So if I if I uh, check this to be unenabled, then this welcome Hajj email is not gonna even show in the template list that I can choose under Hajj. Uh, and here we go. I'm gonna leave it enabled so we can do uh, the test on it, inshallah. So let's say we are we want to update this, or you can make a new one by pressing new, of course, and you can type it. So I'm going to delete everything here, and I'm going to make it very simple. I'm going to say dear, and I would like to put the application name. The nice thing about the fields on the right side here is that they are divided into categories. As you can see, this is company information. These are all fields that we can use. Here's application information. As we agreed, application means reservation. And he are, here are the, all the uh, different uh, placeholders that we can use. Uh, and listings, uh, we have a invoice, we have list of missing documents, list of mobile subscriptions. We got uh, general information such as uh, today's date uh, or a new line. Uh, and then we got branch information. Uh, we got account information. So, so alhamdulillah, like all the categories that are uh, covering the whole system are available for you to choose from. So now I want the uh, application name, so the reservation name. So I come under application information and look for application name, which is right here. All I have to do is double click. Look at this. It's gone here. And then I can say, assalamu alaikum. Thank you for choosing Way to Hajj. We hope to serve you in the near future. And I would also want to say, please see your invoice below. Feel free to contact us about arranging payments. And here, I would like to put the invoice. So again, I'm going to go under listings, and I'm going to choose invoice. I'm going to double click on it. Here we go. She's chosen an invoice. And here, I'm going to close this with company name. I want to put the company name so as a signature. So I will put company name. Here we go. So the company name here. Now, I really like this. I, I think it looks good. So I'm going to save it. Here we go, saved successful. Now I can call this hash email uh, under hash and we can see how it's gonna look like. So here, let's do that example. So under hash, here I'm gonna show you quickly how to do the group emails. So I choose the program and I say show list. Now it's showing me a list of 
uh, all the reservations that we have under this program. Each reservation can have one or more people, of course, but it's always by reservation, which is called applications. So now uh, I can choose the email that I want to send. I can view it here. It will show you uh, how it look like. It will look like now I can choose who I want to send it to. So I'm going to choose this person, this person, this person, these three emails, and I'm going to say send emails. Now the system now takes a second. It makes an email to each of these three people, customized with their own files, with their own information. As you can see here, it's successful. Now let's view one of these emails. Here we go. Look at this. The email has a company information that you entered in settings. It has the logo. It has it's customized with the client name. And it's saying, Salaam Alaikum, thank you for choosing Wayhaj, blah, blah, blah. Here's your invoice. It's giving him the invoice with all the uh, things he booked with us. And it's saying here, thank you for using Way to Hajj. And that's a, the, the name of the company comes here like we chose. That's the benefits. And imagine we already sent, we can send the whole group in a minute. We don't even have to send uh, one by one. We could do one by one from under here. I can, from under here, I can uh, select any person I want and click on emails. And here are the templates. I can choose welcome Hajj email and I can send it. But we can also send group emails. So without knowing how to set up this, there is no way we can actually uh, uh, enjoy this feature in Hajj or in Umrah. So uh, emails could be, uh, the templates could be something like Umrah quotation. Here we go. We already have Umrah quotation for you. We have Hajj quotation. We think that we included every single email you may use. Uh, you may need to modify it. You may need to add certain things to it. That's no problem. For example, we just had a client who wanted to add the terms and condition to uh, their invoice. So here under Umrah invoice, if I uh, look for invoice right here, and before Jazakumullah Khair, I can write here basic terms and conditions, and then I can type first condition, second conditions, and so on. I can type this, or you can copy it and paste it from your Word file, from your website, once you're done, I can save it. Now, every time I'm sending the invoice, under the invoice, it will show the basic terms and condition. If you have some knowledge about HTML, luckily, this field takes HTML as well. So if I want to make this bold, I can do something like this, strong, and then here I can close the uh, field. Now, when the client receives this email, this word, basic terms and condition, will show in bold. So if you have some knowledge about that, you can do it, or otherwise you can have someone uh, who is maybe your website developer or something do it for you. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is all you need to know about emails. You don't need anything else uh, about emails. It's very simple. You can go through all the placeholders here, choose anything you want by double click on it. It enters here. And if you needed any further explanation, you can always click on the help. The help will open a detailed video uh, explaining to you every single thing in this screen. And that's the nice thing about uh, Shurhash, that in each big screen like this, you will always find the help button. You click on it, it, it goes through details of every single thing. And that's it. That's it for emails. Now, enable accounting. So I'll explain this in a second. Uh, but before, I want to differentiate between basic accounting functions and advanced accounting functions. This button here enables the advanced accounting function. What is the difference between basic and advanced? Basic accounting would be like uh, uh, putting prices for your packages, um, uh, adding clients. Uh, the system will automatically uh, do the calculation for you, like how much they owe you. Uh, you can do discount, refund, uh, installments. Uh, you could uh, receive payment. Uh, you could... Uh, uh, all of these are basic account functions, and they come automatically enabled. You don't need to worry about that.
all the expenses, everything. All of these are already enabled in the system. You don't have to worry about it. Now, the advanced uh, accounting meaning to link all of this to accounts. So as we all know, companies, they have in and out. In and out has to go direction. For example, if you buy a room from Movenbeek directly, Movenbeek here becomes the vendor, okay? And what you want the system to do is to keep track of how much you budgeted, how much you quoted your client for that room, and how much you actually paid for that room. And then they minus this from this to give you if you made profit or loss per room. Uh, this is what advanced accounting is. All of the, all of it, it's done automatically. You're not gonna be worried about anything. You're not gonna be putting information one by one. No, no. The system will calculate everything for you, which gives you an extra layer of uh, accounting, which is very beneficial when uh, doing the reports at the end of the season, or in the middle of the season, or by month, or by week, or by day. It's up to you. It gives you the report and you are able to know exactly how much I profited from this file or how much I lost for this file. Uh, not only by file, but also by item. So, for example, in the marketing, maybe you budget in, in your hash package that I am going to spend $10,000 uh, on marketing. But when you actually start doing marketing, you spend 11000 The system keeps track of all this, all your expenses versus all the budget. So, in a nutshell, Enable Accounting here is talking about the advanced accounting, which basically linking the main items to a vendor and something called cost items. Uh, cost items would be something like marketing, like uh, hotel in Mecca, hotel in Medina, transportation, flights, stuff like that. And vendors are those who you actually buy uh, these services from. So if you click on Enable Accounting, really all you have to do is you come here and you press Enable Accounting. And the system will does that very simply. It takes only a minute uh, when you're starting uh, 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 the Sure Hash. So when you get your Sure Hash and you do the first installation, you can come here and you can press uh, Enable Accounting. It will do it simply for you. Let's say that you are an existing customer of SureHash and you are not uh, using this advanced in, uh, accounting, you can also come to this uh, screen and enable it. Or you can actually start with the basic one and then after a year, after you get very familiar and very comfortable with SureHash, you want to add that extra layer, you'll come here and add it. Now, uh, just something to note, if you can see here, these are the options that are affected by the advanced accounting. Uh, those that have um, the check mark means that they are good, good to go. They don't need your attention. So, for example, if I click on expenses here, uh, it will show me that these are the expenses items and they are already linked to a cost items. So I don't need to do anything about it. But for example, if I click on the service which doesn't have a check mark, it shows me here that uh, I have these services, but I didn't link it yet to a cost item or a vendor. So basically I have to, I have to do this in order to uh, uh, enable the accounting. So that's why I say it's easier and um, uh, it's easier to do it uh, uh, in the beginning because this way you don't have to come and redo all of this in the beginning the system is empty right you didn't put any services yet you didn't put any hotels yet so in the beginning uh, uh, it's empty easier you can do it it takes a second but it's also available for you afterwards one thing to note here that once you enable accounting you cannot disable it so once you enable the advanced accounting, anytime you're adding a transportation, a flight, a hotel, uh, meals, uh, services, anything you're adding, it will ask you for these two things, the cost item and the vendors. And we'll talk in details about cost items in this video later on. We have a whole screen for it that we will explain it to you. Uh, but that's basically it. Once you save uh, this and all of them have uh, check marks, you will see the uh, the button. Uh, it will be available, enabled. So you can click on it 
and uh, that's it you have your accounting enabled one last thing before we move on from this screen uh, uh, if you click on vendors here you're able to add more vendors so that you can uh, uh, so you can link the expenses or the service to for example if I come here and add Hilton here and for example uh, I can I can put email or phone number that's that's not important but at least I put that uh, the vendor is Hilton obviously later on when you enter the vendor screen it is very important to at least identify an email because uh, we will show you this when we talk about Umrah uh, one of the option is to email the uh, service request like accommodation request transportation request flight request to the vendors automatically sure Hajj does that for you you don't have to actually manually do it so without an email how we can do this right but for the time being we, what we want to do here is we want to link uh, 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 you know those missing services for example we want to link it to a vendor so here I'll add the vendor I'll press save uh, it's saved already so if I click on uh, service I go uh, uh, I go here and I find it Hilton and I can choose the cost item as well here I finished all the services if I press save it's saved beautifully and now as you can see now services has a check mark and once we finish all of our check marks that button will be available we click on it uh, to enable our advanced settings and will be done uh, here already our advanced accounting is uh, enabled as you can see accounting is enabled so we don't have to do anything about here but we just wanted to show you uh, how easy uh, this is that's it for the enable advanced accounting we have the design cards and contracts uh, what are these uh, basically uh, if we click on the uh, RO pointing down we have three options plastic card passenger stickers design service contract plastic card are the ID cards uh, we uh, give you a couple of uh, uh, designs that come already with the system but you are able to do your own as well and we'll show you in a second the stickers you can uh, design any kind of stickers uh, and buy the stickers by uh, from stables or Avery uh, and then print it yourself these stickers can go on the passports uh, different sizes you can do luggage tags uh, anything that you can print basically uh, you're able to print them same thing with the cards by the way you can have the printer yourself the plastic uh, card printer the IDs or you can actually save it as BDF and then uh, print it get it printed from uh, a printer uh, uh, place that you have in your uh, in your city uh, uh, design the service contract the service contract is basically the agreement between you and your clients whether it's for Hajj or for Umrah it should be a template written by your lawyer uh, with your full terms and conditions and we'll show you how to do this in a second uh, why do we define it here uh, because we define it only one time and then we call it for Hajj and or we call it for Umrah so in Hajj it will show us uh, with one click we can print 600 uh, tags that we de we design it here and under Hajj it will pick up the information of each passenger automatically Hajj or Umrah of course same thing with stickers same thing with the contract so this is a nice thing about the settings without doing that you cannot print IDs you cannot print stickers and definitely you don't have any service contract which is the law uh, 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 in, I'm sure it's the law in your country and it is definitely the law in Saudi each uh, application should have a service contract that has your terms and conditions so God forbid if in so God forbid if anything happens like COVID-19 for example then you have the force majeure clause uh, uh, protecting you uh, from uh, uh, any legal uh, responsibilities now let's jump into uh, into these options so first we'll go to the plastic cards here uh, we have uh, basically uh, some menu and we have uh, in the menu we can create a new one uh, we can save we can delete 
we can select an existing templates and work on it and we can test the printing uh, on our uh, on our uh, uh, printer uh, 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 here we basically uh, define some basic information like the card name what do you want to name it uh, something to note here, uh, each time you uh, uh, make a new one, you are creating a new face. So, for example, if I'm going to work, let's, let's make a new one right now. Let's call it test front face. And I can put some description here that maybe I want this uh, for Umrah or Hajj or Umrah and Hajj. I'm going to say Umrah and Hajj ID cards. For example, uh, the sizes here, these are the default size of the plastic card. So you don't have to worry about changing them. Here it's asking you about the printer. So if you already have your printer selected, you can select it here. If not, choose Microsoft Print to BDF. So when you print these cards later on in Hajar or Umrah, you can use the BDF. Uh, the logo, it's asking you here if you want to select a different logo than your logo by default it's gonna pick up the logo uh, uh, like your logo that you sent to sure Hajj uh, when you uh, purchased uh, your subscription now the background you are able to set a background to your card uh, there is an album of backgrounds that come automatically with, with your subscription I am going to choose this one for example so as you can see, that's that's the, just a background. Uh, you can put any background you have uh, on your card. Uh, and then once I finish these parts, I can press save, and here we go. Now I, I, I saved. So if I go here and look for test front face, here we go. That shows me how my card looks like. If I want to edit it, I press on edit, and I start choosing from the left side these are all placeholders they work the same idea of the email template that we talked about and you are able to drag it put it and we'll do this in a second uh, I want to also uh, point out that there is a help uh, 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 window here if you need uh, help you can click on it it will explain each field step by step what to do and what not to do uh, so that this way you could uh, learn more and design your cards and remember these cards are designed only once you don't have to come back here you can always uh, uh, edit you can always add but you can only uh, you can actually do it once uh, also on the uh, right side here as you can see there is all of these uh, comments or uh, help uh, tips uh, so let's say you don't want to watch the video just uh, quickly want to know uh, the mode allows editing so I have to edit mode so I have to click on edit and that tells you uh, uh, that the, if you click edit now you are able to add fields but if you want to see how it looks like you end the edit and you see how it looks like in on the real design so these are just quick tips uh, without having to watch the full video so now let's say that okay this is the place for the picture so we want to add a picture here so I'm gonna press on edit so now I am enabled to edit again the fields here are categorized so I'm gonna look for the uh, 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 the picture here we go passenger photo and I'm gonna drag it here now it automatically comes uh, width to width okay side to side so from this options here I can shrink it or I can expand it or I can shrink it down or I can shrink it up like or I can expand it up so I'm going to uh, shrink here a little bit maybe that's a good size and shrink here a little bit and then I can move it to the right and I can move it down a little bit and see how it looks like okay not bad but I need to expand it a little bit so I'm going to expand maybe here as well and then move it up a little bit and then yeah maybe that sounds good but it needs a little bit more so I'm gonna do a little bit more just to be precise and that looks good enough for me
So now this picture is actually going to pick up the passenger pictures that you're going to select. Mm -hmm. So we have the option, and we'll show you that in a second, where you can, uh, again, uh, by package, uh, you can select one passenger or you can select all passengers, and it will pick up all of this information automatically for you. Now I'm going to press on edit again. I want to add, for example, passenger name. So I'm going to drag this so it comes here, and I'm going to bring it down. Maybe I want it here. And then maybe I would like this color to be yellow. So I want it to look yellow, and I want it bold. Now if I click on edit, here we go, passenger name. It looks nice, clear enough. Passenger can read it. I can read it, no problem. Maybe we want to add the visa number as a barcode. So I'm going to... Or I can I can I can bring this here again. I'm gonna I'm gonna go down and maybe shrink it a little bit, move it to the right. And now if I look, it's gonna look something like that. And maybe I want to add nationality again. I can take it here and then bring it down. And I can say I want this to be mm, CN and I can center it to uh, left, and I can make it bold. Now if I click, now see it's showing CN, and it's already uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the left. And now, if I want to enter the company logo, so I can bring the company logo here, and as you can see, it picks it up automatically. That's the same logo we sent to Shurhaj, and I'm going to shrink it, and I'm going to bring it down and I want it to be in the center now if I look at it okay that looks good for me and of course you have a lot of other information so you have the move number the bus passenger bus you got passenger uh, passport number you got um, uh, uh, ba uh, passenger name with no title so no mr. Or mrs. Uh, you got passenger unique ID, so sure hash creates an automatic ID for each passenger that is not duplicated. So you can use this to scan. So you can actually have this ID and uh, uh, use it to look for something if you ever uh, use that. Um, you got the address, you got the phone number, you got the package name, or maybe you want to put something that uh, actually edit something. Uh, so maybe I, I, if I click on fix text, I can bring, I have to press edit first, and if I bring, bring fix text, it's giving me the option to write what I want. I can write something like uh, 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 emergency contact, and I can say, well, I want this font to be smaller. So here we go, see, I'm making it smaller, and I can do this to the left, and I can make it bold. I can do whatever I want. It's very nice uh, feature that you can uh, select, and it will always look very nice. And once you finish, you can press save. It will save it automatically for you. Now, some people, they only do one side. That's fine. That's okay. You do the one side and then done. But other people, they do one side. Uh, sorry, they do both sides, front and back. So if I want to do the back here, I'll go new and name it back, design it, and then come back to this, to the front, and choose, choose, so you see here there's option print front and back, so I'm going to choose that option, and I'm going to select from my IDs which one is the back, so right now we have a couple of backs here, I'm going to choose this one for example, as you can see uh, it's already designed for me, and now uh, this will be the front, this will be the back, for each passenger okay so for the sake of this I'm just going to remove this emergency so it doesn't look bad for us and I will also make nationality uh, I will center that so for the sake of testing we have now the front we have now the back I'm gonna hit save now I'll show you quickly how is this gonna be very useful for us so if I go to Hajj again for example in Hajj and in Umrah, I can do printing. Under printing, I can choose that I want to print ID cards. Here, uh, it tells me which card do you want to do. We want to do the test. As you can see here, 
uh, the card right away showed up, uh, the showed up uh, front and back. And we have here uh, a, a message saying that the printer we chose is not defined because I, I don't have my printer connected, of course. So I'm going to say OK for now. Uh, now I can choose any package I want and I can say show list. Here, these are the list of passengers under this package. If I choose this person, note how the name changed, for example. If I choose this person, this person, this person, see, now the pictures are changing, the name are changing, and the code are changing. So you see, I don't have to actually type any of these for each. I can select all of them, or I can select some of them like this. And I can say, okay, for these people, I want to print the cards. And not right now, the print cards, of course, is disabled because the printer is not correct. Uh, but if we correct the printer, this one will be enabled. So let's actually do that quickly. That's a good exercise. So I'm going to exit hash for now. I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to choose the printer. You see, we didn't choose any printer. So computer sure has saying, okay, which one do you want to use to print? So now I'm going to use Adobe PDF, for example. And I'm going to click Save. Very good. Now, if I go back to Hash, <clears throat> Printing, Print ID Cards, and I choose, I want to print this. You see, there's no error anymore. And here's the front, here's the back. That's really good. And here is the package I want to show the list. And I'm going to go for this, uh, for these two, for example. I can select both of them. Uh, and I can say, okay, now print the cards for me. Now it's telling me because I chose BDF, right? So I'm going to save it to my desktop and say, for example, uh, IDs. And I'll save that file. It's creating the file for me, assuming that I don't have the ID printer. Uh, if I do, it will send it automatically to the ID printer so you can actually uh, print it. Uh, here we go. That's ID and as you can see here it's already saved it to me see each client it's saving each client uh, a separate uh, file so this way you can put all of these clients see this is this is client number two uh, you can put all of these clients or all of these files on uh, USB and then take it to your printer and they will be able to print it for you uh, we do highly, of course, recommend that you have your own printer uh, and then you do it once, really, when you have a group going. Uh, it will be great and you can do some adjustment here if you feel that the card is being printed a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left. You can always do the adjustment here manually. So that's basically it with respect to the plastic card. Uh, passenger stickers exactly the same way except a little bit easier you don't have really front and back it's always one side uh, and uh, as you can see you can do new and then you can start uh, by giving a name to that sticker and then from sticker type you have all of these sizes automatically done for you you can see if I click on it it's giving you a description that it has 10 rows and three columns so a total of 30 labels and that's how each label is gonna look like and then you can start drag and drop uh, 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 basically uh, uh, fields from here from the left to the side but remember you always have to select the printer you always have to select the background if you want I don't recommend using any backgrounds for a sticker but it is there for those who want to use it and uh, 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 logo you always have to choose your logo or if you want to use uh, the same logo you sent your hash then that's what you do um, you have to save the template always before you actually use it so I'm gonna actually give a template here I'm gonna say test and test sticker and I am going to use yes I'm gonna use that template and again I'm gonna do that Adobe PDF and I don't want any background so now it is saved I can select it from here test sticker here we go and then I can do something like passenger name I want to put the passenger name but I want to center it to the left and I would like to do a QR code um, for the portal for the passport number so I'm gonna put the 
code here and I'm gonna shrink it and I will put it down and then all the way to the right and then I would like a barcode with the passport number so I will shrink that and then put it down here and that's enough for me I'm gonna save that you see how easy it is now again if I go to the Hajj or Umrah screen and I choose <clears throat> print passenger stickers again same thing I choose which package I want this package show me you have some filters of course so from the package you can choose which application or you can say I want to see only citizens and then you can see the non-citizens and then maybe you have different sticker for each and from here from the right side I'll say okay the sticker type I want to see the test stickers as you can see it's showing you how it's gonna look like and then here the printer tray because we selected Adobe I will choose automatically selected okay so here this option uh, it's uh, so sometimes you have a sheet of stickers that you have used maybe five stickers from uh, and you want to continue using that that gives you this ability so here you can select that I want to print uh, from row number two for example and column number two so this way it's gonna skip two rows sorry it's gonna skip one row it's gonna go to the second row and then it's gonna skip one column it's gonna go to the second column and it's gonna start from there so all of these uh, four stickers that or five stickers that you used before uh, uh, you didn't actually lose the whole page just because you printed four or five as you can see here when I click on one person the information changes so for example this person is named Adnan you see the name change the passport that you are and this person is Afzal here we go and so on so for the sake of testing I will do all and then preview stickers and guess what done here we go here's all here's all my sheet with all the stickers all I have to do is I can print them I can uh, you know close them close the thing and print the stickers I can do whatever I want I wanted to show you this quickly to show you that how easy it is you define this stuff one time and uh, uh, you don't ever have to come back to it unless you want to uh, edit it uh, the nice thing about this as well that uh, the, the ID cards and the plastic stickers is not something that you have to do in the beginning when you uh, install your hash it is something that you can do later on uh, but uh, try to do it. It, it you know this whole setup takes 30 minutes to 40 minutes stop and you know you don't have to worry about it anymore now designing the service contract the agreement contract it's very simple very easy we're gonna go that, over that quickly so if you click on it you will see that uh, here you have a couple of options again the help is there so you can click on the help and it will explain one by one what everything is in details but we will uh, quickly show you the important uh, part that you need to know so the contract shape is very important that you understand how the contract is gonna look like a contract has a header which you don't have ability to change this is basically your logo and some information about your company and uh, the initials of the client and so on and so forth so this is the header uh, uh, of the page the introduction which is actually um, uh, this is the introduction which we can change here and I'll show you that in a second uh, the package details this is created automatically by sure hash so sure hash picks up whatever whether whether it's package whether it's a customized Umrah uh, whether it, any services that you choose in sure hash it's considered package details it will put this for the client the application details, so the contact per, uh, uh, person, information, names, uh, passenger account, all of this is done automatically for you. You don't have to worry about this. And the terms and condition, this is actually something that you have to put. And right here is telling you where these files are that you can actually choose yourself, uh, is, you can actually change yourself. So to summarize, you have two places 
two areas where you need to review them. Maybe you like what's there already. Fine, don't change it. But you have to review it just in case uh, you want to change something. The introduction and the terms and condition. Here, we edit the introduction. So as you can see here, this is how your contract is going to start. It's going to say service contract. Maybe you don't like that. Maybe you want to say service agreement contract. That's fine. It's up to you. Uh, then please read carefully. You can change that. Here we go. I can change it. I can say please read carefully and keep a copy. Don't sign it. For example, it's up to me. Uh, the organization, the organizer information. <clears throat> uh, blah, 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 blah. And then here, uh, as we did in, in, in the cards and as we did in the emails, there's a list of basic information that you actually need in the introduction. All you have to do is double click. So if I, st if I stand here and I say I want the company name here, double click on it, its company name is going to be there. Uh, what if I don't want any of this? Okay, no problem. Here we go. Uh, I am going to delete. I don't. Maybe I want the name of the company and the address, but I don't want, mm, let's say, the Munazim information. So, okay, no problem. I'll delete the Munazim information. Done. Okay. Uh, here is saying the applicant information. Applicant means the reservation. You're right. So, applicants here, basically, you got only two pieces of information. It says name, so the applicant name, and then the pass count which again you have here on the right side. Application name, passenger account, you basically press here and you can change all the English. But be careful that uh, if you want SureHash to put a value customized for your passengers, then you have to actually select it, select that placeholder from the right list. Uh, other than that, the rest are just English, which you can write, and then when you finish, you can save the template. Here we go. It saved it. So as we agreed, this is what? The introduction. Okay. Now, the terms and condition. Usually, each company have terms and condition, maybe five, six, seven pages. No problem. So we need to actually uh, 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 tell Shurhaj uh, uh, that this is our terms and condition. We don't want to use yours. We want to use ours. No problem. Where do we find the terms and condition? In the file path. We discussed it before. If you click on it and you go all the way down, you will see that here, the last one, it says contract terms and condition. Right now, it's telling you that it is in this folder. So if I go here, so go to my C, I'm going to follow exactly the folder. So drive one, drive one, one drive. Then I go to sure hash, then I go to templates. Here we go. Hash contract terms. Now never mind that it says hash is actually work for hash and for Omra. If I double click on it, you open the terms and condition. This comes automatically with sure hash. Okay. You can leave it as it is. It's really, really, really good terms and condition. But the only thing that you really need to read and maybe change is your uh, uh, cancellation policy, your deposit policy, and you can find that in page number, right here, in page number seven. So where it says reservation deposit fees, you, you may want to change this and change the uh, dates. So that's basically something that you're going to have to do every year anyway. When you review your terms and you update the dates in it, you can come here and do it. And it's once and you don't have to worry about it for the whole year. And here's the cancellation on page number eight. You can actually say, well, um, you have different cancellation policies, so you can actually follow that accordingly. Uh, once you're done, again, you can do, you can, you can, you know, it's just a word file. So you can do that red. You can do that bold. No problem. I'm sure, Haju will pick it up the way you design it. Once you finish, you hit save and that's it. Now, if I want to if I want to see what my contract is going to look like, for example, I'll go under hash, and if I go to any of my clients, I'll show you that quickly. I'm going to choose that person, for example, and you see I have an option here that says contract, and I want to create an open contract so we can actually see it. I can create and save it. We'll save it under this file. 
but I want to open it so we can actually see uh, the um, uh, different things we did here. Here we go. You see the contract is made automatically. Now you see this. Here we go. It's red and bold, the same way I did it. And in the beginning, it starts with what? It starts with the introduction. And as you can see, there is no Munazim information because we removed it, right? And then after the Munazim, it comes the package information. And after the package information, it says here the contract for this person, Ahmed. Uh, uh, that's how much they owe, the total cost. That's their address and phone number and emails. And here they booked uh, a spot in a double room. So that's one person by himself. Here we go, the name. And it says male, adult, and one in a double room. And then the terms and conditions start. See, this is made easily for you. So when you actually, I don't want to save that, uh, just for testing. When you actually are talking to that person on the phone, you can press on email. And with your welcome Hajj email, you can say, hey, attach the contract and send it then the email is sent with that contract. So without identifying this contract uh, or designing that contract in the settings, guess what? You won't be able to use that option. And that's a beautiful option. Imagine if you are able to send each of your uh, 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 reservation or your applications, their contracts right away. And also, if I actually said create and save contract, I will want to show you quickly uh, uh, what this is going to happen. That under C is giving me OK that it's been saved. If I review the documents of this file, guess what? Right here, it says service contract. I can download it. I can view it. I can print it. I can send it to the client. Maybe the client will actually sign this and send it back to me. I can save it here. We'll discuss this, inshallah, when we talk about Hajj. But you see, this is amazing. We finished already plastic cards. We finished the stickers and we finished the uh, contract. And that concludes the design card and contract uh, button for us. Now, system variables. This is a very easy screen. Uh, if you click on the uh, uh, arrow pointing down, uh, the main one that we you will be using is system variable maintenance and we'll talk about the other two in a second. If I click on system variable maintenance, we have here some options. Uh, we got city, relation, language, special needs, how you heard about us, room view, international city, international hotels. So the cities usually, uh, they come automatically uh, done for you. Uh, and as you can see here to add a new, for example, let's say we wanna add a new city that's not in the list. Uh, you can see here it says to add a new uh, uh, code, you press the plus sign, so I'm going to press the plus sign here, and then enter the value, I'm going to say test city, for example, and then press enter to save it, so I'm going to press enter, or if I want to cancel, I can press escape, for now I'm going to press enter, now it's saved, if I go here and look for test city, Here we go, I find it. Maybe I don't want it anymore, I can delete it. No problem, here we go, it's deleted. So now if you go again to test, to the T, to look for test city, you're not gonna find it, see? It's not there anymore. So that's what you do in all of this. So basically these are fields which you can use under reservation. Uh, the cities, the relationship, husband, wife, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the language, you can, you, can, you can put more languages if you want. Special needs, how you heard about us. Room views is an important thing that maybe you wanna add more views, uh, uh, which will help you when adding prices for hotels. International cities, which will help you uh, when adding an international um, tool to your quotation uh, and same as international hotel uh, now one more thing here that you can actually update see you see this uh, comment here says that you can update uh, so how do we update so uh, let's edit a value for example so I want to I want to edit this city I'm gonna select it press edit and I can put uh, the edit the updated one so I'm gonna say updated for example, and again press enter, it is done. So now if I check this, 
as you can see here it says updated i can edit it again to delete that updated word that i put and press enter and it is done it's very simple and it gives you control it gives you control over the cities over basically the fields which you will need to build a reservation you will need for your quotation and um, all of these are drop down uh, lists which you will find under uh, Hajj and under Umrah in so many places so that's where if you see something missing there you can always come back here add it and then uh, continue your work now again the help is there if you want more details about each field you can press on the help it will give you a nice detailed video on what to do I'm going to exit that now the other two options are actually uh, uh, to give you more uh, control over the countries and cities so I'm gonna choose delete cities uh, this is uh, so you remember in the first uh, screen I showed you we are able to delete but we're able to delete one record at the time so maybe actually you don't want to do this you want to delete all the cities or you want to delete some of the cities that you never use them so you can actually come here and delete cities and choose now you will see all the cities here you have two columns city name and selected there's some cities which you can select you don't you don't have the box to select these are cities which are actually used uh, under your reservations or under your hotels so you don't have the option to delete them in order to delete them you have to delete your clients first uh, which is a very nice uh, uh, way to save your clients if you deleted them imagine all of your data will be messed up uh, these um, cities here this is not used for example so I can select this I can select this and then I can say delete it will delete it for me and they're gone that's it I don't have to see them again so that's a nice nice uh, screen that you can delete multiple cities at once uh, the other option country and city scoping so now maybe I don't want to see these are this is the countries and this is the uh, cities maybe I don't want to delete them but still I don't want to see them so I want to keep them in the database I don't want to delete uh, these countries or cities but when I am doing my work I don't want the list to be so big so I can choose here what is in scope and what's not in scope so if you're working on cities maybe you can uh, unselect uh, or select all and once you finish you can press save cities if you're working on country countries same thing you select whatever you need only and then you press save countries by default they will come all selected so that you can see all of them as you know we don't know really what cities or countries you don't use so um, yeah that's about it with respect to uh, system variables very simple very easy screen again you use it really kind of once and you never come back to it but very important in order to be able to do your work in Umrah and Hajj okay now hotels uh, here we are able to identify our hotels as simple as that it's a very simple screen very nice and we'll show it to you in a second what I want to say uh, before we enter that screen is that you are able to do the same thing under Umrah and under Hajj so in case you are missing a hotel and you want to add a quick uh, hotel you can always do it there as well you don't have to come back to the settings but we think it's um, it is something that is uh, important you include in the beginning and uh, when you're doing the setup uh, each company they usually have a bunch of hotels a handful of hotels that they use they don't use like Saudi Mecca Medina they have thousands of hotels um, you know not everybody use all thousands uh, sometimes you have your prices depending on which vendors you deal with they are dealing with 20 30 hotels at max so uh, uh, um, you know there's no point of putting thousands hotel if you're not gonna actually put the prices for these thousand hotel and actually use these thousands hotel um, uh, I'm not saying this uh, because there is a limitation in short hash absolutely not you can add a million hotel if you want to uh, I'm saying this because practically when you're doing your quotation or you're doing your packages you don't want your list to be scrolling down scrolling down with a million record but you're actually not using these million record there's just no point so if I click on the screen here very 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 simple uh, uh, screen 
on the uh, uh, on top there is a menu we can add a new one you can update and save an existing one um, you can delete a hotel that is not being used so if you actually put a hotel here and you use it in any package or with any uh, customized umrah you're not able to delete it before you delete your client first uh, you can also create documents. Let's say you receive prices from hotel directly uh, and you want to save this. So at any time, if you have any conflict with the accountant of the hotel, you want to be able to say, hey, I actually have the price list. You sent it to me. So you can actually, uh, you know, select the hotel and then uh, you could create a document and upload it. The system will save it. And when you click on review, it will show you a list of uh, uh, documents that, that is being saved and then as usual there is the help which walks you through every single small detail it's way more details than what we are explaining here what we are explaining here is day-to-day -day job we are telling you basically how to start quickly that's what we're doing here so as you can see sure Hajj will come with some hotels that you know five stars one or the most uh, famous ones uh, uh, in Mecca and in Medina and in Jeddah but you are free to add more in Mecca more in Medina more in Jeddah or you can add a hotel in anywhere in the world really you can add in Spain in uh, France anywhere in the world and you can use that hotel to add prices and and so you can use that to add a tour package uh, you can use that for uh, you know Islamic tours or anything you want to add to your quotation but the mainly the main thing that we use sure Hajj for as you know of course Umrah and Hajj uh, so now uh, let's add uh, a new hotel and we, we talk about all of these options while we're adding it. So I'm going to add a hotel in Medina. Maybe I want to add a hotel called Shaza. Okay, Shaza. So as you can see here, I have to put the name of the hotel. So I'm going to say Shaza Al Medina. Okay, and then I have to select the city. If I click the world, then it's asking me in which country, which is really good. Uh, but right now we actually in Medina, so I'm going to select Medina. And then uh, some people may say, oh, you know what, we're not going to fill all of this. It's up to you. You don't have to fill it. But we highly recommend you fill it. Again, remember, you do it once. You don't have to come back and do it again. The nice thing about filling some of these uh, information is that your clients are going to see it. If you don't have it, they're not going to see it. So, for example, uh, I am actually going to go to Google. I'll show you how easy this is. I'm going to go to Google here. And I'm going to write here Sheza Al Medina. Here we go. Right away, I have a phone number, which I'm going to take copy. I don't have to write it again. Here we go. And the contact name, maybe you know somebody there that you like to contact. Uh, so I'm just going to write uh, Muhammad Ali. And then the email of the hotel. Why is the email important? Because if you're actually getting prices from the hotel directly and you want to sure hash to send automatically the uh, request uh, each time you make a reservation, obviously you have to, uh, don't worry, it's not going to send on its own. You have to select, uh, uh, to ask the system to send the emails for you. Uh, uh, they, the system will actually come here and check. If there is no email, the system cannot send your request. So I'm going to write here, for example, I'm going to write here a reservation at shaza.com. Uh, okay, that's great. Now the website. I if I click on website here, I can just take that copy and save it here. Done. The location. If I go back to Google and I click on the map, it will show me exactly where Shaza is. I can I can I can uh, uh, I can zoom in if I want to. I can zoom out. And once I, you know, I, I'm happy with this, I can say share. It's going to give me a link. Copy that link. Put it here. I'm done. I don't have to do this again, ever. So this is really done.
Why did we fill the website and location? When you send, when you send uh, your quotation to your client so they can see it, and let's say they are staying in Shaza, they will have a click here button beside the hotel name where they click on it and it will show and it will show the hotel website <laughs> and it will show the hotel website and contacts. If you don't fill it here in the settings, then how the client is going to see it. If they click on it, it's going to go to your website, which is useless. So by not doing this homework, you are not enjoying all the features. You you know, one of our goals is to make you look like a superstar. We want you to look very professional in front of the client, uh, and it's very actually easy to do. See, it doesn't take me a minute to add a hotel. Anyway, let's continue. So this Shaza is actually a five-star hotel, so I'm going to choose that. Then here are the list of room views, which we talked about in the tab before, system variables. I'm going to choose which views I want. So I'm going to put actually city and haram only. Maybe I want this, these two views only. Uh, then I can choose a hotel picture if I have. If I don't have, right here in Google, if I go back, uh, to the same uh, Shaza and I click on images you will have so many images of Shaza just choose anyone and save that image on your desktop call it Shaza and just call it from here if I click here here we go this is the picture I see and that's gonna show to on the client web portal and it will show also uh, 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 it will show on the client web portal once you finish this, you're done. You can actually save the hotel. Save the hotel. Now under Medina, if I click on Shaza, you'll see that this is the hotel that we just added. Now there's two more places here that you can see, which is details. I'll show you that in a second. And the multi-rooms suite types. Uh, what is this? Uh, uh, let's go to details first. The details here, it allows you to write a brief description of the hotel. You can uh, copy paste the policies of the hotel and you can copy paste facilities of the hotel. So, uh, you know, policies would be something like check in is allowed at 12 o'clock, check out time is at 11 o'clock. Um, the room can have an extra bed or doesn't have an extra bed, that kind of stuff, which you can find it by actually uh, uh, entering, uh, by going to the hotel website and finding these policies. Uh, if I go, I want to show you something quickly. If I say shazalmedinabooking.com, here we go. It will open this website for you, and here you can actually find out if you don't if you if you don't want to tire yourself uh, was writing these things you can find out here the check in time the check out time the cancellation uh, the extra bid policies you can take this copy and paste it here and uh, the facilities are right here so you can take what you want to take and paste it there and the description is basically also done for you uh, right right here um, uh, a quick description about the hotel so you can actually use this website it's called booking.com to uh, you know fill these three things which will be very um, good for your client on their portal uh, when when they click on the hotel they will have these three things if they want to read it they can read it and they don't have to ask you questions and waste your time now here are the uh, suites maybe this hotel has suites and maybe this is something that you want to be putting prices for and you want to sell uh, actually here we give you options to choose the suites which is predefined we will show you in a second how to predefine these suites but when you predefine them you can use them in any hotel so for example I got here uh, uh, Ahmed 2D to do double I got executive double uh, I got uh, presidential I got Sultani I can choose any hotel I want uh, sorry, any suite I want, and then I can give it a name inside my company. So let's say, yeah, it is the Amiri suite in Chaza, but for my staff, I want to call it the Amiri Star uh, suite. No problem. I can put, I can come here and I can say Amiri S, 
for example. Uh, you know, and I can choose up to six different suites, uh, not more than that. Uh, and I don't think any hotel in Saudi has any more than that. Uh, there is a difference between views. We have to understand this. There is a difference between views, which we identify here. Views would be something like standard room, would be something like city, like haram, like Kaaba, like partial, uh, 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 like premium, like uh, executive. Uh, uh, so room view could be anything you want, really. Uh, but then suites are more uh, suites here are more likely of the description of that room. So the Amiri, for example, have two double room and two washroom. Uh, so the executive will have two double room, two washroom, and one room for the maid, and so on and so forth. Uh, we will go through this once we talked about the suites. But if the Amiri is used in Shaza, for example. I can actually save this. And now, when I put the prices under Umrah, so I can give quotation, I can actually put prices for Amiri, and then this way I can uh, quote it to clients. If Again, if you don't do that step, if you don't do this step of suites or views, you are not able to give any quotation. So if someone has just got sure hash, okay, and they want to jump into doing the quotation right away, without doing that step, they will come up with questions like, well, what, what is this? What if I want to put suites? Where do I put the suites? Well, what about my views? I have Kappa view, I have Haram view, I have City view. How can I uh, put all of this? This is not working for me. So it's going to look like it's not working for you, but it's actually because you didn't do your homework. That's all it is. So we highly recommend you set, you take maybe, you know, um, whatever time you want, and add as many hotels as you use. Not just adding hotels, adding hotels that you're not going to use. No, actually add the hotels that you use. That's it for this screen. Hotels are done. Now, let's talk about master data. So we have a couple of options here, but I wanted to start with suite types because we were just talking about how we identify suites. I'm going to show you how easy and simple it is to identify suites. Right here, you see it's very, very, very simple. I'm going to explain to you what this grid first, what is this table, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to add a new one. Uh, uh, if you use suites, we recommend that you do this step first. Uh, before identifying your hotels. So this way, when you identify the hotel, you can choose the suites that work with this hotel, okay? Uh, so the first uh, column here is called suite name. And then here, uh, it is giving you options. It's telling you how many rooms of each category. So for example, let's say a suite has two single, then you'll put two single here. Uh, if it has two double, you can put two double. If it has one double, one triple, you can put one and one. If it has two, 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 you can do that, which is impossible. There is no, not a single suite in Saudi that has that many rooms. Uh, but you have single, double, triple, quad rooms. You're baking, you're telling Churhaj that this suite is made of what kind of room and how many rooms. And then you're putting a short description uh, of the suite. And after you finish, you save. So uh, something to note here before we add a new suite is that uh, if you don't want to add so many types of suites, uh, here you actually identify the uh, suite description. That suite description could be used in so many hotels. So let's, for example, say that there is a suite called two double, okay, which has a symbol uh, two double rooms with two washrooms, okay. So you can identify this suite here, which we're going to do in a second. We call it a two double suite, and we can use it under so many hotels. So if there's a bunch of hotels you use that has a suite which has two double rooms, and instead of writing this by hand every, sorry, instead of writing, identifying so many types of two double room suite, you can actually make it one like two double room, and then you can, uh, under the hotel, you can say, yes, I use this suite. So this way you can use that suite under so many other hotels. So it's just a name, it's giving, it's a name and a configuration. Uh, 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 and under this hotel, you can name it any name you want. Like we showed you under the hotel, you can 
actually choose the two double and then you can call it a meeting. You can choose the two double in a different hotel and call it executive. You know, whatever the hotel goes by, that's a different story. So here you identify the category. So let's do this together. Let's do that um, sam sam uh, sample together. I'm going to go to new, always you click new. And here in the suite name, I'm going to say two double. Okay. And I'm going to come here and say it has two double room. And the description, I will say two double room with two individual washrooms. I'm done now. I just have to press save. Guess what? It is done. You see it here? I can come back here and change it. I can say, no, I want the two double to actually have a space. And I can save it. Here we go. It has a space. Now, if I go back to the hotel screen for a second, I can come under this hotel called Habitat and I can say, I want the two double suite. Now the system knows that it has two double rooms, but call it here Amiri and I can save. And then I can take this other hotel and I say, I want the two double room, but call it here executive and I can save. You see, I called it different. You see, I click now, it says it's showing Amiri. I click here, it's showing executive. Now it's giving two different names under each hotel. I will put the prices that comes with the hotel, but the category of these two suites is the same, two double. So this way, I don't have to add 180 different type of suites. I can just add maybe, you know, four or five, and I can use that in a thousand hotel. That's basically the suite. It's very easy. When we actually do the Umrah and Hajj, we will show you how to add people to the suites, how to price the suites. It's very simple, and uh, a system allows you to do this with one click. Now, uh, if I go back under Master Data, I go here, Sub Agents. Uh, it is actually self-explanatory. Here you add your sub-agents. You have a menu where you can add a new one, save, or you can delete. And remember, with delete, delete is a very dangerous thing to do. So the system actually took all the precautions. They check if there's any record under this specific uh, thing that you're trying to delete, whether it's a sub-agent, whether it's a vendor, whether it's a hotel or a room type, it will not allow you to delete. So don't think that there is a, an error in the system. It just means that you've used it already, so you can't delete it. That's what it is. Protect to protect your information. That's all it is. Uh, now, uh, here there's an option to merge with vendor. And we'll t this basically what it is, is you're saying that uh, sometimes in certain cases, you have a company that you deal with. They are your sub-agents uh, because they are selling hajj for you, but they are your vendors because they are actually selling uh, rooms for you. So they have contracts with hotels, but at the same time, they don't have a quota for hash. Uh, so sometimes you want to merge accounting together of a sub-agent and a vendor. So uh, this is basically allows you to do that. And then here, create a document. You do the exact same thing where you can save some documents and then you can review them later on. And if there, uh, here in this uh, option, there's statement. If you select any of the sub-agents, you can view their statement and there's a help, uh, the help button as usual. Uh, so if you press new, you're able to add the name of that person or that company and you are able to add the address phone number, uh, you know, a couple of phones actually, home, work, cell, uh, email. We highly recommend you always put emails because uh, you can send them the statements by emails and stuff like that. And then with, this, with the sub-agent, you always have to assign a sub -a the sub-agent to a branch. We're going to show you how to add a branch. It's also, also under master data. Uh, but even if you only have one office, you still it's still called a branch. Okay, so you have to assign these people to branches. Why? Uh, let's say you are located in Saudi Arabia. You're a company in Saudi, and you have a branch in Jeddah and a branch in Riyadh. Okay, and you have a sub-agent uh, that is, uh, for example, living in Jeddah. 
you want this sub agent to always deal with the branch in Jeddah uh, so that they can pay him uh, or her all the commission uh, they can receive the documents from him they can receive the payments if he's allowed to receive payments on your behalf uh, you want them to always deal with one branch you don't want them to take money from the Jeddah location and then go get money from the Riyadh location that's not professional at all so you always assign a sub agent to a branch okay now here is the commission rate so you start giving them commission this is basically for Hajj how much you want to give them if they sell a single person uh, a person in a single occupancy or a person in a double occupancy it's per person uh, so you you put the prices that you want to give them maybe you want to give them a flat fee so you can put a hundred dollar for all of them or a hundred you know whatever your currency is and then for Umrah maybe you want to give them something different so you can identify it here as well but be sure that to know that these numbers are per person they're not uh, per uh, package or a group or uh, no this is per person so if he brings you 50 uh, in uh, Benta it will be a hundred dollar multiplied by 50 people okay that's 5,000 and so on uh, this number here just for your information will not be added on top of your quotation this is actually our taking from your profit okay so you, you need to understand this as well so when you set up your profit when we'll talk about that when we enter the Hajj and Umrah seasons uh, when you set up your profit and your overhead you want to account for that okay uh, as you can see here there is a quote here a note here the system is saying that this sub agent Muzammil uh, is affiliated is merged with a vendor named Sidar Travel so now the accounting of these two are together so this is what I meant by if I if I choose this one Hoda for example you see there is no comment here if I click on this button merge with vendor it will give me a list of my vendors and I can say hey I want to merge that with Hilton if I click on it it says successful link is made now if I come back to it see it says merged with a vendor Hilton so basically when you click statement for the sub agent and you choose to merge it uh, you get the statement the the system treats the vendor and the sub agent as one entity uh, but you can also uh, view uh, without the merging so although they are merged with that vendor but I want to, to see the statement alone of this Muzammil sub agent so I can click on it and it's showing me here oh okay so he sold some stuff his commission is twelve hundred dollars and if I go to page two it's showing me that I paid him uh, one hundred and twenty three dollars and that's uh, twelve hundred minus one twenty three I owe him one seventy seven in red uh, you know that that's good I can print this and uh, give it to my accountant or I can uh, save it as BDF from here or Excel or Word and I can send it to my accountant so he can clear the payment so that's it with respect to the sub agents now if I go back and uh, under master data the second option is vendors if I click on it same thing exactly on the left side you have a list of your existing vendors which we added uh, but you can create new vendor and you can basically add their information the most important one is their emails uh, once you add their information you press save it's saved so I'm gonna take the Ministry of Hajj as an example uh, see I added some few information here I can complete this information if I want to but again the email address is important why because when you say I picked this hotel or this transportation or this meal or this service from this vendor and you want the system to request uh, the services as you make quotations to your clients you want the system to have an email so they can send the emails to if you don't have emails then unfortunately you will have to do it manual which just a waste of your time now under this I can add <clears throat> many contacts so for example if you deal with uh, uh, let's say a Saudi uh, company that gives you your hotels and transportation and they have a location in Jeddah, a location in Mecca, a location in Medina, and you have multiple people, you can always add new contact and you can put the contact name and you can put their designation. If there's nothing in the designation, you can add a new designation and you can add some information and save. Let's do that quickly. I'm going to say Ahmed Ali and uh, in the designation I want to say uh, reservation 
manager and information i can say 905-282-9989 extension 1123 and i'm going to say is active means that yes uh, actually show this to my staff so if they want to see who is in under this company they actually can see that you have you, you can see it here see ahmed ali and uh, they can click on it and uh, and edit contact they can view exactly what you know their information and contact them so you can put uh, email address you can put phone numbers but the main email address here would be the email that sure has uses to send the requests okay and uh, again uh, uh, here you can create documents and save it under vendors you can review these documents or you can view the statement uh, so I clicked here and it shows me exactly what did I use from the Ministry of Hajj seems like I took five buses each bus costed me seven hundred and twenty two dollars which is a subtotal is three thousand six hundred and ten so that's the total of these buses if i go to page number two it shows here that yes i made some payments i paid them uh, a total of three thousand one hundred so i owe them thirty six ten and i paid thirty one hundred then it, the balance is only five hundred and ten dollars and again i can save that i can print it and i can save it to word pdf or excel and so this uh, comes very handy, especially for the accounting people or for the owner of the travel agency. Uh, that's it with respect to the vendors. Again, vendors are very important, and that's the only place where you can add vendors. Without adding vendors, you won't be able to do your accounting, and you won't be able to attach your services or your hotels to a vendor. So the system doesn't know where did you actually get these prices from. Now, cost items. Uh, in order to understand cost items, it's very simple. Cost items are uh, divided into categories. They come automatically with sure hash. You're able to update or add new uh, 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 cost item, but you're not able to change anything in the category. These categories are not changeable. So, for example, category like what? Like accommodation. Okay, accommodation category. You can choose if it's in Saudi real or if it's in your own. Uh, currency uh, which means here that anything you're gonna add under this it's gonna be in that currency so uh, obviously accommodation would cover something like hotel in Mecca food in Mecca uh, building uh, food in building Medina hotel in Medina food in Medina hotel in Jeddah food in Jeddah Masha'ar accommodation min Arafat Muzdalifa Masha'ar food and you can add as many as you want so I'm gonna add here a test for example and I can say save now what are these cost items remember what I was telling you when you enable the advanced accounting you have to attach everything like for example you're adding a transportation you have to attach it to a vendor and a cost item so when you uh, do a, a, a transportation for example you will attach it to a vendor let's say um, a ministry of Hajj just an example okay and then you will choose a cost item from under the ground transportation okay so you could say train you can say uh, uh, um, transportation from uh, uh, Afwaj, which is your Saudi uh, uh, your Saudi um, vendor. Uh, this way, what that does for you is every time you actually use this transportation or this product, the system have a value that you entered. So, for example, when you say Gadda to Mecca is worth fifty dollars, for example, and you use ten units, so ten times you use that service. The system now knows that you have $500 you owe to that vendor, okay? And now when you actually reconcile the files of Umrah, you put the actual cost that you paid that vendor, and instead of paying $500, you ended up paying $450 because he had a sale, okay? So what, the, uh, what this uh, does, what sure hash does is it takes the 450 paid under uh, the reconciliation and minus it from the budget which is $500 and gives you 
an extra $50 in that particular cost item, which is, uh, for example, uh, ground transportation. So you know that, yes, after I, uh, uh, in the end of the season, by item, you can check and say, oh, okay, great, I did great in pricing my transportation. I actually made extra profit, or I actually broke even, no problem. Or, God forbid, I actually lost money, so maybe next season, I have to put, when I price my transportation, I have to put extra buffer, okay? So let's go through the categories. Uh, and as we explain Umrah and Hajj, this idea of cost items will become very easy for you. So don't concern yourself. Everything was the cost items already built in with here comes with you free. You don't have to even think about it. Well, as we use uh, Hajj and Umrah, you will, you know, you may say, oh, I want to update this item, maybe call it a different name, or maybe add new items. Okay, so let's go through the categories quickly. <clears throat> the categories which creates any kind of package, Hajj, Umrah, or customized Umrah, or even tours, okay, is accommodation, which is basically the hotels and anything to do with hotels, uh, air tickets, which could be international air tickets, or it could be uh, uh, domestic air tickets in your own country, ground transportation, which is basically in uh, Saudi, so that's why it's uh, 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 um, it's already uh, ticked as uh, in Saudi reals. Services in Saudi, services in Saudi could be something like Zamzam water, could be um, um, babysitting, uh, could be any service that's basically added in Saudi that is not transportation or uh, to do with hotels. And then services in dollar. Uh, now, that dollar, by the way, is going to change according to your country. So if you are in, uh, in uh, let's say, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, it will be something like Bissels. If you are in Europe, it will be Euro. Uh, so this dollar is because our uh, currency here is dollar, so that's why it's showing dollar. Um, so now, uh, services in dollar, that services could be a courier that you're sending uh, here, which costs you money. Uh, uh, it could be extra seminars, and it costs you money, stuff like that. And then uh, comes the overhead in Saudi. So maybe you have, you know, people working for you in Saudi. So it has all of these cost items underneath. I do not think we missed anything. Again, you may add something, but I doubt that you will find anything that we missed here. Um, and then overhead cost in Canadian, and that includes like rent, um, bills, and uh, and all that kind of stuff. It's right here, you can read it, and you can update it if you want. And then the airline tickets in Saudi Arabia, which is like Gadda Medina, Medina Gadda, you can add that here as cost items. So simply to summarize this, the cost items are simply and only used for advanced accounting so the system can compare between budget price and between selling price. And though uh, at the end it gives you profit or loss per cost item which helps you to uh, 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 update your prices in the future and you know uh, have a buffer and create more, uh, hopefully, uh, profit. So that's it with respect to the cost items. If I go back to the master data, now Hajj license. A uh, beautiful thing about uh, this system of Sure Hajj that it allows you to manage multiple license, not multiple companies. You have to identify the difference. So uh, if you are, uh, let's say, a company and you have maybe three, four other companies in your country selling for you, okay, you have to purchase one license for each company. Okay, so each company will have their own system because they're not taking everything from you. They're actually maybe taking Hajj from you or Umrah from you, but they also have their own stuff. So you want them to have their own accounting, their own clientele, their own things. And through Sure Hajj, you can actually talk to the developer, Mr. Faiz, and he will do the link between all of these companies so that you can share only what you uh, uh, are giving them. So you become the mother company and they become sister companies. That has nothing to do with Hajj license. 
Hajj license are simply saying that maybe a company named A uh, has multiple licenses in Saudi Arabia, has a, a license under uh, B and a license under C and a license under D, for example. And each of these licenses, they have a quota. So uh, uh, as you all know, when we apply for a visa at the end of the season before the people travel for, uh, for Hajj, when we apply, we have to apply each license on its own. So you have to identify your licenses here. So under the tab of Hajj, you are able to tell the system that these, you know, these bunch of people are under this license. So when you are actually applying for the visa, the system will help you to know which client to apply under which license. Okay, that's simply it. And it's very simple screen. You you press new, you add the license name. I'm gonna say license A, for example, and I'm gonna say the quota is 100 uh, visa and the office number is 52. Once I've done, I click save, done. See, all of these are licenses that actually are in the system and it's saved. This is a static thing. You have to differentiate between the license and you, uh, your Hajj quota, which we talked about under miscellaneous, this one here. This one here is a dynamic number that the system uses to enforce sales stop. So once you reach this number, you stop, okay? So you actually have to put this Hajj quota here. But here, you're just telling the system that when I tell you to assign these bunch of people to this license, I don't want you to add more than 100 people. So, for example, I'll show you that quickly so you are not confused. If I click under uh, Hajj and I go under Operation, I can uh, uh, select an option called Assign Passengers to License. If I click here, it tells me, okay, which license do you want? I want license A. I say show. It showed me that the quota is 100 people. Now I can select any program to assign these people. Here I have in this program 46, uh, sorry, 64 passengers. I want to add all of them to this license. If I press assign, they will be all assigned. Okay. So now the, the great thing, and it's telling me here that, you know, the count is 64 people. The great thing is when I send these data, these passenger data, to the Ministry of Hajj website, and I have multiple licenses, and I'm confused, I don't know which one is going on which company, the Sure Hajj is going to tell me, okay, these 64 people is going on license A, and these, uh, you know, 90 people is going on license B, and so on and so forth. Okay, now for now, I'm going to unassign them because we're just doing testing and I'm going to close Hajj. So this is what we use here, and that's actually an option that you don't have to do at the beginning of the Hajj season. You can actually do it even inside, when you are inside the Hajj season. It's not something that you have to do in the beginning of your setup. Uh, so you can come back and do it before you actually apply for the visas. But if you know your license and they don't change every year, you might as well just add them once, and you don't have to worry about them again. That's it with respect to the license. Now, uh, under master data, uh, we're gonna see now the company branches. So very simple, you actually here, you add your branches, okay? So each branch will have the name, of course, and then the address, uh, the main contact person, and main email. These are very important information. And uh, under, uh, under these uh, branches, as you can see, these are the list of users which we will show you uh, where to add these users in a minute. Uh, but uh, as you can see here, we have you know a couple of branches here. This branch, for example, we don't have anybody underneath. We don't have any users. Um, in this branch, we don't have any users. This branch, we don't have any users. But this branch, we have three different users, and they have a sign-in. They're active people. OK, so all you have to do to add branches is you press New. And then you add the information, contact information. Email is the most important. And if this branch is active, you press active. If this branch is not active, you press not active. And after you finish, of course, you press save. How is this important to you? So let's say that you have two branches, as we talked about, one in Jeddah, one in Riyadh. 
and you're actually uh, you know exchanging money between each other so uh, let's say the branch in Riyadh need a five thousand dollar to pay a bill uh, so you give them five thousand dollars this is all can be taken care of in the advanced accounting under sure hajj so you can do this under hajj so branches are very important to organize accounting for you and also to organize users so we know that this user belongs to this branch so your employees basically with the uh, original setup of sure hash there will be automatically uh, a branch created for you called main branch uh, so if you want you can also come back here under master data and then press company branches and you can select main branch and you can actually edit it so you can name it whatever name you want and you can add all the information you need okay that's it with respect to branches now uh, the next item is expenses items expenses items like exactly cost items but these are the expenses so uh, 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 here as you can see you can add as many as many expenses as you want let's say you want to add a uh, rent in branch in Gadda, rent in branch in, in, in Riyadh um, a phone bill a gas bill um, utility internet la 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 so uh, salaries all of these expenses that you actually uh, these are stuff that you are going to spend during the season you can add all of them and when you add it you have to uh, as you remember you have to attach it to a cost item so for example if I am doing advertising I can uh, choose the extra uh, as my cost items or if you have a cost item called marketing you can put advertising and attach it to marketing what does that do as you remember we talked about the uh, cost item sure has uh, takes what you spend what you budgeted to spend and what you actually spent and minus both of them to give you profit or loss per each item so in this advertising let's say you budgeted 10,000 but you ended up spending 15,000 so it will show you that you lost 5,000 from advertising now how the system is gonna do this when you're spending you're gonna add your expense you're gonna say I paid this company uh, 15,000 and it's gonna ask you okay you select the vendor that you paid you're gonna select it that company and then it's gonna ask you okay which cost item and you're gonna say advertisement because it's gonna be expenses right and when you're creating your package you are going to set a budget for this advertisement so now the system has a budget and it has an expense it can minus both of them to uh, from each other and it gives you plus or minus your profit or loss it's very simple uh, of course this is only if you enable accounting and we highly recommend you enable accounting from day one you have to learn how to do the job properly and to do the job properly every single item has to be accounted for I know all the owners of the company will love these options because they have full control and no one can steal a dollar from them uh, but the employees usually they find it very hard uh, 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 but they don't have to enter this every single time this is just done once and again you only each season you just put your budget and that's it you don't have to worry about anything but every time you spend something so if you pay a bill you have to record it if you uh, uh, buy a computer for example you have to record it all of these things being recorded that's what's gonna help you to get the full reports now again under master data we got the to-do list to do this this is a very 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 good uh, option and it's very easy as well uh, what this is is you are telling the system that you want to do certain things before the departure day or let's actually put it accurately say the first stay date of each package so you know your package your program whether it's Hajj or Umrah has a first say so for example if you're going to Medina first and you're staying in Movenbeek from August 1st to August 5th and then you're going to Mecca from August 5th to August 10th so what is the first date of accommodation here is August 1st in Medina so 
we're gonna say here for example I want complete full payment when 30 days now the system automatically understands that okay in the package where it has the first day August 1st 30 days before that it's going to give you a reminder that this task is need to be completed and you have to set this reminder off you can delete actually if you don't want uh, something you can delete it or you can come and actually uh, edit it so here for example I'm going to say uh, documents submitted and keep it as 15 and then save all it's all saved now how is that gonna benefit us let's go to our Hajj application again and we come here as we are adding new applications so I'm gonna choose any package and I'm gonna say here test uh, by Ahmed admin just any name so that we can basically uh, just test that reminder I'm gonna put the phone number here and save as I am saving this okay here we go you can see here by just looking at the list you can see which files has a reminder if you actually uh, uh, select that file and you select the reminders tab it will show you that hey uh, it's due this reminder is due this reminder is due now the reason it is due is because we uh, have these packages these are all packages that uh, are were supposed to go 2018 so basically as you can see here the due date was supposed to be 21st of July so uh, uh, if this is already been uh, taken care of all you have to do is select it and then you can click done here and then you can say save and we will go over this inshallah when we talk about the Hajj application uh, that's it basically with respect to uh, the to-do list uh, sweet types we already spoke about it lastly under master data is the Saudi taxes so that Saudi taxes could be used for um, it's actually not only Saudi taxes it's taxes in general you can use it if you uh, collect taxes in your country or you can use it only in Saudi uh, that we called it Saudi taxes because in North America uh, Hajj and Umrah we don't collect taxes according to the government rules how is this set up uh, it's very simple I'll explain the grid first and then uh, uh, we have three columns here we got tax names so you can call it any name you want we have the order you want this tax to be applied in and the tax percentage so for example let's say we have VAT we have uh, municipal and we have HST for example uh, what uh, this order means one means that you want uh, this tax to be applied first okay two means that after applying tax number one take the full amount and apply tax number two to the full amount which is made of the actual number plus tax number one three means uh, take uh, the full amount including tax number one and tax number two and then apply this tax to it okay because the the, the way Saudi is doing the taxes right now is that uh, 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 not only some uh, of the product has uh, VAT, some of the product have VAT and municipal, and they are talking about uh, introducing new taxes. So you can add multiple taxes and uh, assign them to order number one, no problem. For example, here I'm going to say new, I will add a tax called test, I'm going to leave the order to number one, and I'm going to add 20%. And I'm gonna save it you can see here that I have now a tax called text and a, ta a tax called VAT and both are order number one that means what if I have a hundred dollar uh, tax number one will be applied so it will be a hundred a hundred uh, it will be 20 and tax number two will be 15 so the total amount will be a hundred and thirty five okay now tax number two is five percent so that is gonna take the hundred and thirty five and then apply five percent on top of that and so on and so forth so you can add a hundred taxes here if you want and you can set the order according to what you think uh, now a question 
Well, what if a product doesn't have a tax? Let's say a hotel that doesn't charge you any taxes or visa that doesn't have any taxes. Don't worry about this. When we talk about Umrah and Hajj and we identify our services and our hotels and everything, we will show you which, uh, how to choose one or two taxes or all of them or how to choose that this product doesn't have any taxes. So don't worry about this. This is where we just set the order and the percentage of our taxes. Again, without doing this here in the settings, you will lose a lot of money because, uh, for example, all of your quotations will be wrong because you will quote the actual number that the hotel send you without the taxes, but when you actually send the hotel to book your Umrah people, they will actually apply the taxes and you will lose that money, okay? So there is no point uh, of not taking that exercise first, do your sittings first, and then start working with Umrah and with Hajj. So here we just set up the taxes, and then in Umrah and in Hajj, we will choose which items to apply these taxes to it. That's it. That's basically it from the taxes. And you can always come here and, you know, change the order. You can make it zero if you want. No problem. All of the master data is now finished. Now we move to uh, the next step, which is airlines. Okay, so airlines, very simple. Very, very, very simple. With the original setup of Shur Hajj, you will have all of this list, okay? But maybe we missed something. Maybe you have some airlines locally that we don't have here. No problem. You come here, you press new, you start adding the airlines. So I'm going to just add a test airline called Air Canada. And I will say the abbreviation is AC. And the email, it's not mandatory, it's advisable. Uh, to add an email here, and that's so that Sure Hajj can send automatic emails to this vendor uh, with your bookings if you ever quoted the client the Air Canada uh, 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 tickets. Otherwise, you're going to have to do it manually, uh, no problem. Then we'll click Save, and after Save, it's right here, Save Now. And uh, once this airline is saved, we can actually start adding documents to it. So let's say that <clears throat> you uh, uh, booked 50 seats with this airline for Umrah or for Hajj, and you want to leave this contract so all the airline people can have access to it. So no problem. You can come, press Create Document. You select the vendor first, which is Air Canada. Then you press uh, uh, Create Document. Then you actually uh, write short description will be a contract for Umrah Marsh Group, for example. And here you can say reservation uh, number uh, a G this this 50 seats. And then you can say is is it a service contract? Yes, it is a service contract. And then you can select the contract from any any of you, basically your computer. I'm just going to select any file. And you say, OK, here we go, successful. And as you can see now, if I go to different airline and then come back again, I have a contract. If I select it, I can read the description here. And I can view the file. I can print the file. Or I can delete the file. OK, so this is very great, great for, especially for airline people, if you have multiple agents do airlines and they share information together uh, they actually can use this tab so uh, they all have access to the same contract so if someone is not in the office and you as an owner or, or as a salesperson want to find some information you can ask whoever is uh, airline uh, agent in the office and they can access here and tell you exactly the details of this uh, contract that's it. That's it basically for the airlines. Very simple tab actually. Uh, why is this important? Also, I didn't say uh, in Hajj and in Umrah when you're adding uh, segments, airline segments, you're actually choosing from a drop down list of airlines. So if you don't add your airlines here uh, or actually when you, if you don't add more airlines here, most likely you won't find them in Umrah and in Hajj. You'll have to come back to the settings add them and then uh, be able to actually use them in Hajj and in Umbra. That's it for the airline. Now, the most important and last tab in this session is security. Okay, what is the security? In a nutshell, security is 
creating groups of users. Accounting is considered a group. Admins is considered a group. A salesperson is considered a group, and so on and so forth. You can create unlimited numbers of groups. For each group, you can assign certain parts of the system so they can see it and actually work on it and other parts that they cannot enter, they cannot see it, okay? Once you do this, you can start adding your employees, employees or sub-agents or anybody who is going to be using Shurhash and assigning them to a group. Let's do this, let's do this uh, together, let's look at this beautiful screen and do it together. Without doing this, imagine every single user is an admin. So everyone has access to your profit or loss. Everyone can actually enter in the settings and change data or change permissions or change email settings, which we have talked about previously and can mess up the whole system for you. That's why we highly recommend that you take a couple of minutes to create your groups and then adding employees with a username and password that they uh, can use and they will be only allowed to do what you want them to do. Let's look at this together. So in this screen you have two tabs, very simple. You have user groups and you have users, okay? So user groups is where we create a group. I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to call that airline airline agents okay and I can write a small description for myself so that I can remember what this is so here I'm gonna say uh, these agents are not allowed in settings but allowed everywhere else that's just an example okay of course airline agents uh, they are not to be uh, doing, uh, you know, uh, rooming or operation. There's multiple things which we'll show you in a second. Okay, now before I save, I can select all permission. On the right side here, there's, you know, multiple permission which we are going to explore now. Uh, but if I want, I can select all of them or I can not select any of them. For now, I am going to say save. As you can see here on the left list, I have airline agents. I selected, I selected it, and I don't have any permissions yet. I can add permissions now. These permissions are categorized, okay? So here, for example, under admin console, we have something like system configuration, which is like the settings. We got managing security, so which is this screen that we are in. Uh, managing the website, of course, I don't want to give the airline people uh, uh, access to managing security or managing my online portal or managing my email settings or maybe you want, it's completely up to you, okay? So you can choose the permissions that you want them to do. I would actually, under, you know, seasons, there's some stuff. Under pricing, there's some stuff. Here, I want to give them defined flight routes. Yes, that's something the airline people can do, okay? But they don't have to do any uh, uh, packages. They don't have to do any services like transportation or tents. No, I don't want to give them access to that. And here under Umrah, uh, do I have anything for flights that I can give them? I don't, so okay, I don't want to give them anything. Under Hajj specifically, do I have anything for flights? No, I don't, that's good. Uh, giving them giving them flight routes will allow them to work under Umrah and Hajj, don't worry. Uh, and the uh, web functions, do I need to give them anything? No, 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 that looks very good. I don't need to give them, oh, one second. Actually, I got under accounting here, I got... Um, Application refund, yeah, I want to give them because maybe they overcharged a client and they want to do refunds. I want to, uh, do I want to give them uh, access to deleting vendor transaction? No, no, that's not their job. Uh, or sub-agent transaction, that's not their job. It looks to me like uh, these are the only permission that I would like to give these airline people. I'm going to save that. 
Now that I created my group and assigned what they are allowed to see and allowed to do, it's time to add my users. So let's add a new one here, username, let's say Muhammad Ali, work title, airline uh, reservation, agent. Login ID, I'm gonna say M Ali, and password, I will say password. They can change their password later on, but I always like to give them something easy so that they can enter the system and then change it later on. Phone number, that's their contact, personal contact number. Don't worry, it will not show to the clients in anywhere possible. It will just be uh, something that, uh, it's like a company directory. So if you are looking for one of your employees, you don't have to ask your employees, uh, what is this person, what is Muhammad Ali's phone number, or what is his personal email. Maybe you just want to send them something by address, by mail. So you can actually have this information yourself. So I'm going to write here anything, basically. And then in email, I'm going to say mali at hotmail.com. Now, here is where I select the branch. Remember the branch we talked about it, so I'm going to say, uh, actually, I'm going to put this person in London branch. And then the address, their own home address, again, it's not going to show to the clients. So I'm going to say 12 London Street, London, Ontario, and then the postal code is L2, L2, L2. And then the extension, that's, your, that's his extension under, uh, like in your company. Uh, so I'm going to say one, two, three, and then uh, notes. There is no notes. I don't want to write anything. Here I can choose, is this an active user or not? So for example, let's say that you have Muhammad Ali is one of your employees, and then Muhammad is going to take a month vacation. You don't want to give them access while they are on vacation. You can actually come here and take the active sign out, uh, off, and then save it. And then when they come back, you can actually activate them again. So that's a good uh, a good um, uh, option. So you don't have to delete and add them, and that's not really good. Uh, the other two option is just basically for uh, processing visa or operation manager. You can put these two because they have meanings under Hajj and Umrah, and we'll discuss that when we come to Hajj. But basically, it means that although they are airline. Uh, reservation but you want them to manage all the operation for you or manage all the visas for you so for me here I'm just gonna choose active now from the right side here's my group of permission which uh, you know I created remember we just created the airline agents I'm gonna select that right here so and then you have to always uh, get out of the same line so I was in this line I'm gonna go to that line now I can save, here we go, great. So now look at this, Muhammad Ali is already saved. And here we go, the username and password are not changeable at all for, from my side. He can change, he can change his password uh, when he logs in. And now he is already uh, in the group airline agents. We can always come back to the screen and change the group or give them multiple groups, that's completely up to you. Every time you make any changes, you have to press save so it can actually update it. Now, if you go to this user groups and click on airline agent, under users, it shows Muhammad Ali. Another thing, if you go under master data and you go to branches and you click on London branch, now you have an employee in London. And that's how you assign uh, employees to employees or sub agents actually to uh, branches. Again, Anybody that you want them to use sure hash, they have to have a username and password, okay? So this is very important screen. And again, you have the help tab. You can click the help to watch a complete video giving you step-by-step -step, uh, information about every option here. I believe that's it, that we finished all of our options. The other two options here is basically the main menu, which gives you a quick access to uh, you know, Hajj or Umrah or changing password or any of these options. And then you have exit admin. If you've done your work, you can exit your admin and actually work on different options.
Uh, folks, um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I think we have covered everything you want uh, to know in settings. Again and again and again, I'm going to say this for the million times, without doing what we just went through, you will not be able to uh, use Umrah or use Hajj or utilize all the options. You may use something, but you will lose a lot of other great features that your Hajj offer a part of your subscription. Jazakumullah khair. We'll meet in a different uh, session, inshallah, talking about Umrah and about Hajj. Uh, take care and uh, have a great day.